Hello, everybody. Welcome to The Nash Show. We're doing things a little bit different today. A little educational, informational video with our good friend, Patty, with Jungle Frenzy. And you'll learn... The macaques are funny. They have their little attacks. Little Mac attacks. All right, so um, one of the most frequently asked questions, of course, that uh, we get, uh, the by far most frequently asked question is, that I'm going to ask you is, how do you get a monkey? Well, the, the biggest thing that we always tell people, is the first thing is to find out if your state is legal. After your state, of course, you want to look at not only your state, your county, your city, your township, sometimes even a village. And it doesn't matter if one is yes, the second one is yes, the third one is yes. If your village is a no, it's a no. It's banned. So we always start off with the very first question we ask people is what state they are calling this from. If they're in an illegal state, we can't help them. Then after that, what we go, the next thing we're looking at more so is what that person does I don't want to say necessarily for a living, but are they going to be able to provide the home that a primate requires? All right. And then from there, who do they reach out to to make sure they don't get scammed? Well, the, the biggest way to find out if they're going to get scammed or not is we always recommend people to get on USDA.gov because USDA.gov will show them. Now, also, you got to be careful because like us, yes, my name is Patty but I'm with Jungle Frenzy, and so we are gonna be listed under Jungle Frenzy. So you wanna make sure that somebody has their USDA license because without a license, by law, they cannot buy a primate. The USDA regulates the sale of all primates. Not some primates, all primates. Okay, so first off, you wanna see, okay, so I live in Kentucky. Uh, you probably quick Google search, is Kentucky elite or legal for monkey ownership and then uh, maybe specifically which type of monkey you're looking for whether it's a macaque or a capuchin and then whoever's trying to sell you the monkey you would want to look up their name on usda.gov yes yes you do want to get on usda.gov and as far as the state we don't recommend google we try and tell people google is not your friend <laughs> because google will tell you kentucky is a legal state kentucky is actually a banned state but see, usually when you look on Google, is it's going to be the people that are saying, yes, it's legal. When you look, it's going to be like a pet store or a pet company that's trying to sell you that baby. They don't care if you're in a legal state. Yeah. Because it, it is the buyer's responsibility to know your law. So we, as far as the state ownership, we recommend you go into your state website and pull up the animal ordinance. Now, what happens if you purchase a monkey illegally? If you purchase a monkey illegally, you're risking that monkey's life. Because literally the USDA, Law Enforcement Division, they can come in and they can confiscate that monkey. And it doesn't matter a year down the road, five years, ten years. It doesn't matter if you've had that baby for ten years. When they find out you're illegal, they have every right to come in and confiscate it. That's, uh, yeah, that's really sad. And that's something to think about if you're looking for a monkey and... It's illegal. Um, you're risking that monkey's life, and most likely that monkey's going to be euthanized. Here's the macaque. <laughs> most likely that monkey is going to be euthanized because of your decision. Um, and yeah, it's a sad truth, but uh, happens more often than it should. <laughs> so um, from there, I think one of the Next biggest questions is, what do you need to prepare to have a monkey? Well, you know what's crazy is we, we find that a lot of people tell us they prepared with the caging, the room, the clothes, a baby crib, a baby stroller. We tell people don't do this. A monkey's not going to sleep in a baby crib. A monkey's not going to sit in a baby car seat. The way, and people say, well, of course they can sit in a car seat, just like a human baby. No, it's like putting a snake in a car seat. If you're gonna, if the monkey's gonna ride in the car, so like if we deliver a monkey, that monkey's gonna be in a 
animal approved travel cage for tra traveling <laughs> as an yeah. example. Yeah, um, I think one thing that a lot of people don't realize is monkeys live for a long time. Correct. They live for 50 years, so it's a 50 year commitment. Yes, depending on what primate they chose. Yeah. And, uh, or, well, yeah, the capuchins will live for 50 right. years. Yeah. So. And, and babies like the Jabba's, their life expectancy is around 25. Yeah, so basically for 25, <laughs> here's the... <laughs> They want to see him. Well, put their, put the thing up there. He'll get on okay. the blanket. They want to see the babies a little bit. Hey, come here. <laughs> come on, get on the blanket. Yeah. So, like, basically, for fifty or twenty-five or fifty years, you have this responsibility of caring for and looking after this monkey that could very easily um, get into something dangerous without your supervision for the next 25 or 50 years. In addition to that, you can't move anywhere because it's very likely that wherever you're looking to move to is probably illegal. Um, so, and then also, on top of that, there's certain state lines you're not allowed to cross with monkeys as well. So, you restrict your traveling, you restrict your um, your freedom to move. Come here. Yeah, it's okay. Come here. <laughs> you want to get on the blanket? So, with that, um, a lot of people will get monkeys and then... Um, when life changes, they forget that this commitment restricted them from right. being able to make those changes. So. Right, that is very accurate. Like, example, New York is a state that we cannot even go into. You cannot yeah. go into New York. Let's use Florida for an example. Like, so to have a class three permit for a capuchin, you need to have a thousand hours documented with no less than one year time frame. So you've had a have experience for a thousand years, the one year time frame, you've got to have recommendations, you've got to fill out this application. It's not just, oh, I can go get a monkey and take it into Florida. And every state has a different requirement. Mm -hmm. You know, some states you only need a health certificate to enter the state. Other states require, let's use Ohio for an example. A capuchin is legal in Ohio, the macaques are not. But even for a capuchin to enter into the state of Ohio to live, that capuchin, of course, needs the health certificate, but it also needs a prior entry permit and even a microchip. So there, are, every state has a different requirement. People can't just buy a monkey and think, okay, they paid the money they bought from somebody legally, so they can just take that monkey anywhere. Right. It's not that way. Yeah, and one big thing I think um, that really changed uh, AJ's life with having Nash and Lacey and George uh, was they, they had to find someone that was compatible with the monkeys to take care of them if they ever wanted to yes. leave the home for yes. multiple days. So... <laughs> This is a little too funny. Um, so, yeah, I mean, things like that, you just have to think through. Uh, and in addition to that, they think these monkeys are eating bananas all day. But what kind of foods do, should you feed them? Okay, so let me give you an example. We actually turned away a buyer who was a school teacher. So even very well educated, husband very well educated, and they could afford to give that baby a good life, meaning I'm not concerned about future vetting, you know, if, if they had a small emergency, can they handle it? But when I said to that lady, how long is she gone for the day? Because I'm trying to get her to realize herself that this is not a good fit for her. She tells me that she's a school teacher for eight hours, drives an hour each way. Ma'am, you're gone 10 hours, who's gonna feed that baby? And her response was that she'll leave a bowl of food like she does a puppy. <laughs> Okay. Ma'am, you understand they drink from a baby bottle. And her response was, well, I'll just put the 
formula in a, like, what is it, the gerbil water bottles and attach it to the cage. Ma'am, you understand that they need to be fed every three hours and we burp them after feeding them. You know, so it's just not the right fit. You can't just throw out a bowl of food and walk yeah. away from them. So we, we've turned down many homes and some people might may get upset about that, but you still gotta do what's best for the primate. Mm -hmm. Hands down. And um, how much do primates typically cost? Not only the initial cost, but also the maintenance. Well, you know what's crazy is it, it varies because I work with multiple breeders across the country. So it's it's kind of like a dog. You and your neighbors can all sell the exact same AKC Champion Line dog and each one's gonna charge a little bit different. But if you're looking at a capuchin, we're seeing them anywhere from the eighteen to twenty eight thousand dollar range. You know, so they can vary quite a bit. But there's <laughs> there's no five hundred dollar monkey, there's yeah. no twenty five hundred dollar <laughs> monkey. Yeah, so if you've got someone out there trying to sell you a monkey for less than five thousand dollars or, or even less than ten thousand dollars start asking questions <laughs> yeah even at that yeah you're not getting one that cheap if it's less than eighteen thousand start asking questions and no rehome should be sold to anyone like that and then how much for the for the maintenance would you say well you know we choose to be our primates when we were met, um documenting what we spent on just organic vegetables for one year we spent $5,000 just on vegetables. That's not monkey biscuits. That's not any vet care. That's not any, like some of us as babies choose to put diapers on them. That's not counting any kind of enrichment. So again, if somebody's thinking they're getting a $2,500 monkey, because that's really all they can afford, how are they gonna be able to afford to feed them? Mm-hmm, yeah, and the vet bills are expensive. Yes. Emergency vet bills. Especially emergency yes. vet bills. Yes. And, uh, but also, time is money. How much time would you say you've got to <coughs> spend with them every day? <laughs> well, in the wild, they are found on their mound pretty much 24-7. So when they are not on you is pretty much when you shower. Now, granted, as a brand new newborn, we don't want you to sleep with them. We're going to tell you put them in their sleep cage with their blanket because we do know people that have uh, just had a little bit of misfortune. Mm-hmm. So, but beyond that, when they're big enough that they can sleep with you, people have them on them 24-7. Some people even up to two years. Yeah. Um, well, I mean, y'all have a wealth of knowledge. AJ has a wealth of knowledge. You have a wealth of knowledge. Anyone that's watching, if you have any questions, please reach it. You can, you can message us. AJ will try to answer you as quick as she can. Or you can look up Jungle Frenzy on Facebook uh or anywhere else online we'll, we'll put sure. it, can you pin it that way uh, i'll have, leave a link in the we have I'll some leave a fake pages the description. remember we do have fake pages uh -huh. i'll leave a link, link in the description so that you can uh look them up online and uh, our pages are to fake. ask them all kinds of yeah. questions if there are any additional questions that you'll have um but other than that what kind of advice would you give to anyone that's <coughs> watching that um, oh, well, I think, is interested in you know looking for monkeys. I think the biggest thing is we wanted to talk about people not getting scammed. Um, as we always said, always check to make sure they're USDA licensed. So first you're going to get on USDA.gov. You can pull up licensees and registrants, and that's where you type it in the search bar, Jungle Frenzy, there we are. Then when you check that, it will also give you our address. So for example, if we live in Michigan, and somebody's shipping you a baby out of Kentucky, you know it's a scam. So they can verify the address, verify the driver's license, verify the phone number. All three match up to Michigan, you might be heading in the right direction. If you've got an address that's coming out of an illegal state, or if they're gonna send you to a vacant parking lot to pick up a baby, yep, you cannot ship a monkey, as AJ just, Reminded us, we hear that all the time. Well, and here's the thing, we just had somebody this week that they went to somebody's house, a fake jungle frenzy. So be careful when you look us up. Oh, we have that. At, We've got 2,000 followers. We're not the jungle frenzy with five followers. <laughs> we do have 2,000 followers, but the fake jungle frenzy sent somebody to a house and the lady actually does own a monkey. Ah. Uh. Yeah, and it turned out, of course, a scammer sent them there but they thought they were getting an $800 monkey. Um, and it just happened not two days ago. 
Yeah, the we have fake, dollar monkey. <laughs> yeah, well, we have people that imitate all of our stuff too. I mean, yeah. we have 17 million. We have some that's got 3,000, 2,000, 500, 20. So it happens. Yep. So you have to be careful. There are scams. Yep. And that's like even me myself as a broker. I can only buy from USDA licensed breeders. So with us, generically, almost, <coughs> not all, not all of them, but almost all our babies we sell, we sell them in there, they've already been microchipped. Some states require it. Um, some vets, the reason I say not all is we might have a couple vets that they're not comfortable doing it at this age. They would rather have it done out under, like when they have them spayed and neutered. But we like to have ours microchipped so people know they get tracked back to us. And of mm -hmm. course, USDA looks at our books. One thing when you buy from a broker is we hear some people say, don't buy from a broker. You don't know what you're going to get. Well, I will tell you this. We personally go and check out the facility. If something's not up to par, we won't buy from them. Plain and simple. Good. If there's a sick baby, we decline it. Mm -hmm. To be honest, we don't only decline it. We won't buy a future baby from them. Mm -hmm. Now, granted, we know things can happen, but still, you've got to try and keep your standard high to have a good yeah. success rate. And we've had we've had multiple people reach out, and um, we have specific we have questions that we ask. You know, whenever someone says, "I'm interested in having a mon getting a monkey," um, we'll usually kind of reach, go through the questions. Well, is it legal in your state, in your county, in your community? Is it do you have kids? That's one main thing that we ask is, do you have kids? Because, um, kids and monkeys don't mix very well because, um, both are very instinctive. <laughs> yes. Well, and you know what else a lot of people don't think of? A lot of people will say to us, well, my kids been raised around all these animals. And so let's take all that aside. Let's pretend your child and the monkey could be that one in a million. And they really did have a great relationship. What about when the kids got soccer practice? Or baseball or basketball or cheerleading and then they're going away. Now this monkey, because that monkey can't travel to all these places, is she now home alone. You know, and people don't think about that time because you can't split that time up. That is another reason why we really try to advise people to wait till the children are older. Mm -hmm. And as you just mentioned, you should never take monkeys in public. What exactly. Are, what are some other mistakes people have made? That well, monkeys... well, here's, so that's Diet. a big one. Because with, <laughs> with going out in public, what a lot of people don't realize is technically, by law, if you're out in public and somebody asks you a question, you have just exhibited. You exhibit without a license, you broke the law. So we see people all the time be like, well, the owner of the restaurant lets me bring in the monkey. They like the monkey. But that restaurant owner, even knowing they're being nice, <clears throat> they still aren't above the law. And the law says you can't take them out without having that USDA exemption license. Another thing that we see a lot of um, mistakes being made is with diet. And unfortunately, even though people don't want to hear it, because somebody might have a new monkey and a cute monkey, and a lot of comments are, oh, how cute. It's not cute to feed your monkey Starbucks. It's not cute to feed your monkey cupcakes and ice cream. The key is the number one killer in a capuchin is diabetes. So you have to love them enough to feed them correctly. Mm -hmm. Not feeding them cakes and ice cream on their birthday. Yeah. Not even with the marshmallows and even fruit. People don't realize, but we don't even give our monkeys bananas because of the sugar content, even in fruit. Mm-hmm. Now, I mean, you know, um, it's okay to have a little bit of sugar every once in a while, but it definitely shouldn't be part of their primary diet, right? And, so, like, and too, it also depends on the primate. So like a squirrel monkey, for example, can have a little bit of sugar. So that's another place where people need to be educated about it. Mm -hmm. Yeah, definitely. Look, whenever you're researching, which you know, depending on which mon monkey you have, research the specific monkey that you have, whether it's a spider or a macaque or a squirrel or uh, uh, what are they called? Marmosets <laughs> or marmosets. I wouldn't recommend getting a marmoset, but, <laughs> but, um, uh, but uh, uh, other than that, I mean, um, we, we do find that there are a lot of people out there that um, 
are a little bit careless with the way that they they take care of the monkeys so we want to make sure and educate everybody um and make sure that you know none of y'all see some of the mistakes that have been made out there so um we have heard a lot of stories and we've um we've been very educated on this topic especially patty especially aj y'all please reach out if you have questions we would be happy to help y'all um but other than that what other kind of uh advice would we have for anyone that you think well another thing that we have happen often when when people call us about wanting a baby and we we try and spend a lot of time with them and then the next day when they call us back their biggest response is well my spouse said no well that should be honestly that needs to be addressed before you even call us you and your spouse need to be in this 100 percent before you go further with that of course, we went over knowing the laws. Of course, we've already discussed making sure that they're, you know, if somebody's a stay-at-home mom, you know, I don't want to say mom, let's say stay-at-home wife, you know, if somebody's home or works from home, then that tends to, they might be able to spend a lot more time with a monkey than a school teacher, for example. Mm -hmm. So we, when we talk to people, we'll have some people that call us and they specifically want a certain kind of monkey and we'll try and turn them away from that. Because some of the monkeys just may be better suited for their situation. Another thing a lot of people don't realize, now I'm talking generically. Generically speaking, boys like their mamas. Girls like their daddies. So a lot of times people will ask me that question, what sex should I get? Well, it really depends on who the monkey's going to be for. Are you buying it for your wife? Well, then generically, the boy's going to be a mama's, mama's mm -hmm. boy. <laughs> of course, there are always exceptions. We we never want to say it's always black and white. There's always an exception, but that's generic. All right. Well, thanks for joining. If y'all have any other questions, please let us know. Uh, we would be happy to answer all the questions that y'all might have. Um, send us private messages. I'll put Jungle Frenzy in the link the link in the description of this video, I'm going to upload this, export it, and post it on Facebook and Instagram too. Um, so y'all please let us know if you have any other questions and y'all please be safe. Look out for scams. Please, please, please listen to this. If you are interested in getting a monkey, first off, if you are, we don't recommend you get one. Uh, we are promoters of responsible monkey ownership we do not recommend uh, monkeys oh another question i do want to ask someone asked about spiders touch on that real quick have patty touch on they're asking about the differences and why on spiders okay just the differences or more they specifically want to, specifically um after we answer this we will go but they want to know about spiders um and stuff like that um different breeds Okay, quickly, as far as what I can tell you about spider is with us personally, I don't sell any. We don't sell, we don't rehome, nothing with the spider. And the reason why is the country is having, would I say, a huge influx? Am I saying this properly? An illegal. We're having, seeing a lot of illegal monkeys, Ill illegal spiders that are coming into the country. So, and I'll, spiders are spider monkeys, not real spiders. Yeah, yes, yes, spider monkeys. <laughs> spider monkeys. Spider monkeys. But let's, let's give an example. So let's say there are four, and I don't know how many there are. I'm just giving you something to think about. So if there are four breeders that have spider monkeys, legal spider monkeys, and let's say they have four moms each. So we've got 16 moms in the country that are documented. Those 16 moms are going to have one baby approximately every two years. We can't have 200 spiders born to 16 moms. So for us, even knowing we deal with USDA licensed breeders, we're stepping back because we don't want to be confused with the illegal spiders that are coming into the country. Yeah, so if any, any of y'all are interested in spider monkeys, um, honestly, they're not a good idea right now. Well, they're, they're not a good idea long-term. They're also not a good idea long-term. 
but that's a that's a different reason. <laughs> um, the reason AJ is saying is because spiders have a, have a, a worse temperament than other breeds. They're harder to handle when they and hit puberty. So, um, so spiders, you you definitely have to have a you gotta have caging. a heart for spiders. <laughs> well, the caging alone, you yeah. have to have like how many feet, like twenty feet high by. 50 feet long, whatever. Mm -hmm. Well, I will tell but you, I'm in the arm span. If you are purchasing a spider monkey, it's most likely an illegal spider monkey that we don't know where it came from. It wasn't in the U.S. Health issues with it. And um, it probably wasn't a humane way of getting that spider monkey. So mm -hmm. I wouldn't recommend contributing your money towards that. Right, right. And, the, and to also add, there are a couple different... Like if you're talking about a lemur, they cannot cross state lines. Cotton top tamir, they can't cross state lines either. They're considered endangered, so they have to be bred in the state in which they're purchased. Correct. And All people right. don't know that. Correct. Yeah, yeah. Um, other than that, I mean, I wouldn't be able to touch on some of the other breeds like chimpanzees or... <laughs> uh, I wish. Or what are they called? The ones with the calls? uh get gibbons the gibbons, gibbons <laughs> or gibbons i wouldn't be able to touch on gibbons either but if you if you ever go to a zoo i would recommend observing some of the gibbons or the beautiful or chimpanzees songs. they're they're fun to look watch and um uh, look at um but other than that um i think we've we've oh oh yeah i did want to touch on you know since we've since we just talked about how a lot of the monkeys coming in from uh the spider monkeys coming in from, I don't know, say Mexico or Central America are uh, illegal. We won't recommend um, even thinking about purchasing a spider monkey. But um, a lot of people think that all of the monkeys are like that. Um, but they're not. Most of all of them, capuchins, macaques, are coming from breeders that are bred here in the U.S. And they've been here for uh, at least over 100 years maybe 200 mm -hmm. and i would like to add though just so people know in a couple years there are a few breeders that will be having spider babies so if somebody really wants a spider wait because in a few years when these breeders will be having babies then they can get a legal baby and not have to worry about it and, and like i say there are a few now they can find a couple right now but they want to i would personally go to that breeder facility and get that baby direct. Even me as a broker, don't buy a spider from a broker. Don't buy a spider from a broker, buy it directly from the breeder. All right, I think we've pretty well touched on everything we wanted to touch on. So if you have any more questions, just send us a message, a private message. You can send us a message through uh, Instagram or Facebook and AJ will be able to take a look at it. Um, or you can send Jungle Frenzy a message and Patty will take a look and be able to inform you. Um, and they might even, you know, if you're very serious about it, they might even give you a call. So, um, please, please do your research before purchasing a monkey. Uh, we hope you all are safe out there and we just are really wanting all of the monkeys out there to be safe and healthy. Um, and that's primarily the main reason why we're doing this. And we also want to wish everybody a happy Mother's Day today. If anybody contacts us, please leave me your phone number because we do not do business through text or through messages. They have to call us. That way we know they're not scammers trying to gather information to scam people. So we do ask them to leave a phone number and then we will call them and discuss. All right, and before we go, we gotta get a little cute little close up of these two and, precious and babies. And you also do face. Us. She also does FaceTime calls, so she under so people know it's legit. Here's the little, here's our little fellow right here. <laughs> He's like, that's bright. <laughs> <laughs> Poor guy. <laughs> oh, also, macaques do have a little bit of a smell to them. <laughs> they smell like Fritos. They smell like Fritos. <laughs> uh, if you're wondering, <laughs> if you're wondering, <laughs> the capuchins are. Uh, pretty well odorless <laughs> but um here's our little baby capuchin we have with us today too so thanks for joining everyone we hope that this was a really good educational video for y'all um we love y'all and I'm, I'm seeing all of the hearts in the 
in the messages, but I haven't been able to read all of them. So um, I'm sorry if I missed some of y'all's comments. But y'all have a great day. We love y'all. Happy Mother's Day.